Hi there everyone, welcome and thank you for joining uh, this video webinar uh, and watching the video on YouTube if you're watching it there. Um, today, uh, my name is Malcolm Budden, first of all, to introduce myself uh, for anyone who doesn't know me. Um, I'm a CCIE service provider candidate, I'm CCDE certified and I'm currently going through the process of working through a couple of different CCIE workbooks towards the CCIE service provider 4.1 exam which I have the lab scheduled later in the year. Um, so what I want to do a quick video on is how to use TCL scripts. Um, something that I, you know, I was well aware of for a number of years, but never really used them until I've got to this you know, stage of my career and I'm actually pursuing the CCIE and I can really see the value in using them. So I'd like to do a short video to demonstrate on how to use a TCL script uh, to verify connectivity uh, within iOS XE and iOS XR because the syntax is slightly different. So to set the scene as to around, as, uh, around what I'm actually trying to do here, um, if you don't know, in an MPLS network, there's a few different features and components that need to uh, op interoperate together. So first of all, you need a, an IGP, a link state IGP, um, such as OSPF or IS to IS. We'll be using a, a OSPF in this video because that's where I am in my studies and I've got some labs and stuff ready uh, ready to demonstrate it. But the same concept would apply if you were using IS to IS. Um, on top of the link state IGP, you would also need uh, a, a label distribution mechanism. Now, there's a few different ways to do that, and that is to pass MPLS labels um, uh, into the environment so that packets can be label switched from PE to PE. So if you think of an MPLS network, uh, there's plenty of documentation out there if, you, if you're if you not familiar with it, but if you think of it as three routers, I call them routers, you might call them routers, somebody else might call them something else. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna routers, routers, not routers. So if you imagine that you've got three routers, you've got a PE, a P router and a, another PE. So you've got PE1, P1, and PE2. And we want to label switch a packet. So what we need is OSPF uh, to advertise loopbacks between uh, PE1 and PE2, uh, and also have a loopback on PE1 in the middle in order to participate in the, the, uh, the label switching process. Um, so I'm not going to go into LDP theory because there's plenty of other uh, resources that you can learn about that. Um, what, what we need to do is uh, select a, a label distribution mechanism and we have LDP or we can pass we can pass labels in three ways basically. We can pass them LDP, like I've said that about 10 times in the last minute, but there you go. We can pass them via LDP, we can pass them via a protocol called RSV or we can pass them via uh, BGP with a standard called BGP3107, which is labeled unicast. Uh, we're going to focus on LD because that's uh, what is the most common. Uh, there is also actually segment routing as well, which is uh, a big buzzword at the moment, but I'm not going to cover that in this particular video, maybe in a future one. So uh, what, to simplify it, what we need to do is build um, the IGP process, advertise look back into that IGP process, and then the LDP and LDP neighbourships, which happen between PE and the P router in the middle, and the P router in the middle, and uh, the PE on the right hand side. If you think of uh, the scenario that I explained, um, these are these sessions are created with the look back interfaces. And as a result, labels are then passed between the routers uh, in relation to the specific prefixes uh, effectively being advertised by the end customer. Now, uh, a crucial part, if your IGP is broken, um, then you're not going to be able to pass any labels. Uh, so let's say, for example, OSPF was broken uh, between or the loopback was unreachable on PE1. And let's let's multiply this and say we have uh, 50 routers or 100 routers. Uh, if you want to test basic connectivity, then uh, you want you don't want to be jumping on every router and doing a uh, ping and then the IP address of the loopback. You want a quick way to find out what the loopbacks are within the OSPF area, and then a quick way to uh, do a ping test from 
basically wherever you want to on on the network um in the core so i'm going to explain how to do this on uh, ios xe and ios xr i'm going to whiz through it pretty quickly so hopefully you'll be able to keep up if not you can watch the video again after so this is the ios uh, if i just show the show version here I've lost my session but um if i just show the version here you see it's ios xe um, and what we're going to do is work through a specific methodology this doesn't just link uh, link the tcl script and this is actually the methodology that i'm building up on how to troubleshoot ospf so um the first thing that i would do is i would do show ip interface brief um, this gives me all of the interfaces uh, if you want to narrow down some of the noise uh, in that particular output you can do show interface brief and then pipe it with an include loopback and then you'll just see the loopback addresses the loopback you're going to be working with on this particular router is loopback 0 which is 172.16.7.7 you might also want to do a show run interface loopback uh, 0 to see what the configuration looks like if it's got OSPF point point or specific type associated to it the next thing that i would do is um now that you have the loop back you you would say uh and, and the ip address and i would do show ip protocols to see what calls are actually running on the net on the network at the moment and you'll see we've got a ospf process of ospf one now uh, and there's various different bits of information about that to take a step further i would do show ip uh, and this is working my logic right ospf uh, you can even narrow it down to that particular process uh, OSPF uh, interfaces so that gives you a lot of different information you know it tells you the the whole and dead timers the type of interface that you've got etc uh, you might be wondering what this has got to do with tcl scripting but as i say it's a process for troubleshooting um building up a, a bit of knowledge of the network before you actually do any troubleshooting so uh, if you want if you want a little bit less uh, a more of a summarized version of that you can do show uh, OSPF interface brief um, which gives like a snapshot of that so now now we know a bit about like the interfaces um, what you could you could even go the show run section s uh, section OSPF uh, and you can see the actual OSPF configuration on the on the iOS XE box the next thing uh, that you might want to do is uh, so what we want to do here is basically ping all of the loopbacks um all of the loopbacks um coming from the ospf database so if you do show ip ospf one database what we're looking for here is the router lses which you'll see are located here so um the it's, it's ospf process id one um, we have router link states, which is uh, a LSA type one. And we have four devices in area zero uh, that are ad that are ad routers. So now, if I move to the TCL script and I explain a little bit how that operates, um, I'll just put the the XR one down a little bit so we don't confuse things. So this is the iOS XE um, TCL script. Um, and what we want to do, let's just say that this was blank. There's one I prepared earlier. So let's just say we had a, a script in here from previous uh, that somebody else had done or handed this script over to you and say, use it as you wish. So let's explain what it means. TCLSH, um, you enter the TCL script in um, uh, privileged exec mode where you run show commands on the router. Uh, you then have to enter into the TCL shell and that's basically this command here uh, and at the end you exit the tcl shell with tcl quit we'll demonstrate this in a second so what we're saying here is like for for each address address is the name of the variable list uh these are the variables so one 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 two 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 is what was maybe done before so we we want to uh basically the, the reason that we're looking at the ospf database is we can see an entire snapshot of the topology again if you're not familiar with ospf you might need to do a bit of research on it uh, and a bit further study but the ospf database shows a snapshot of the whole network uh, various different lses meaning different things but we're focused 
Hopefully on these are the other routers in the network. So 3356 1.1, there's router one probably in the network. This is probably router two, this is probably a different one somewhere else in the network. Um, that, there is a topology behind this, but not too focused on that. I just want to uh, demonstrate the concept. So if what if if we do if we select these rulers, uh, I'm going to just show you how I would deal with this. And what I'm thinking here is speed. Speed. How do you do this quickly? Because if you're in an OS uh, a CCIE exam, you need to do everything at speed. So I would uh, get to the end of here, hold down shift and delete shift. Press end on your keyboard. Delete the same thing for each IP address, uh, and then you can see that you know if you had like another another uh, thing, you can just plug it in there. What we have uh, just above this is like after the address um, name for the variable list, we have a open curly bracket. Then we put our list of addresses in uh, that we want to ping. Uh, we close the curly bracket, which is here, and we then ping execute the ping command, uh, we, we put a symbol in which uh, means that we want to call the variable, which is the dollar sign. Then we say we want to ping the address variable list and source it from loopback zero, which if we remind ourselves loopback zero is everything that we ping in this TCL script will be sourced from 172.16.7.7. So uh, we then um, close that uh, command, ping address source loopback zero and then do tcl quit which exits back out into privilege exec mode so let me just run this script quickly um uh, i like to tidy it up just so that it looks nice um but to their own uh, if i copy it control c and then paste it in uh secure crt will tell me if i want to uh see this it will tell me what i'm actually pasting in so i paste that in oh, do, 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 do. Um, ah, uh, sorry, I didn't copy the whole thing. Let me try that again. Nothing like that in a live demo. So you see it, I never, I never checked this. Stuff, right, but there, this time, so you see, but I got a success, ping success from every single one. So that explains the uh, concept of TCL script, and then we do TCL quit to exit the TCL script, and we're, we are back. Uh, so this could be this could have other routers added in there to your heart's content. Now, if we move on, to, I'm just going to delete this up so that we can compare the TCL script for uh, compare the TCL script for iOS XR quickly. Um, so how how does it compare? It's running more or less exactly the same commands. However, there's a slight difference in the syntax. So if we move to router two here Cisco uh, yeah let's just log in like that and uh, just to validate you can normally tell which is a iOS XR because it has like root processor 00 CPU but I would suggest if you're unsure just check um, so that you know that you're doing the right thing um, so how does it compare um, we run through the same commands so I'll put a list of these commands in the in the show notes uh, or the video notes just in the description. Um, but we would do the same thing. So, but there's a slight difference. We do show IPv4 face brief, uh, and then would look back if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, if it was IPv6 you were doing this with, you would just do exactly the same command that show IPv6 interface brief or with the. Uh, with the include loopback, you can also do show uh, uh, show protocols this time. Uh, you see that we have another option. Uh, we are show protocols. If we do a question mark, we can actually specify this to OSPF, and we can get information. We see here we have two OSPF processes running in this particular scenario, but we are going to uh, concentrate on OSPF process one. So we take it to the next stage and we go show uh, OSPF. There's no IP here. Show OSPF uh, uh, one um, interface. Similar kind of thing. Gives you quite a detailed bit about the network types, hello and dead timers, etc. If you want to just see a snapshot, you can do brief. Um, you can also do show IP OSPF one neighbors. 
and then true course uh, sorry it's not ip it's show ospf1 neighbors and then you do show ospf1 database now all we're going to do here is take these router ids copy them into the script so i'll explain the script in a second i'm just going to quickly do this and take the edit this out so you see it's pretty much pretty much uh, yeah pretty much the same stuff that we that we want to ping um but as i say like if you if there's a if there's a, a particular address that you want to ping uh, that might be in like the external lsas or something else uh, you can add it into the tcl script it might not be for ospf you might just want to ping critical devices on your network randomly i don't know you've all got your own use cases so you can work that out so um with ios xr it's slightly different so uh, let me just get a clean slate here uh, we have run we have to run the tclh rather than just type tclh it's still done from privileged exec mode uh, we have a same command for each address open curly bracket uh, for the variable we called uh, this could be called anything this could be called uh, test so let's uh, let's just prove that concept uh, test uh, for each test and then we need to change uh, well, we'll put open curly bracket we then put our uh, variable list in with our ip addresses close the curly bracket the syntax here is slightly different ping minus s which means source space then from the loop back so similar to up here loop back uh, and then and then we add the variable name uh, the variable list name so if we just change that to test just to prove the concept um, we take the script copy it control c paste it into the xr instance um, and there you go and you notice we have exit instead of tcl which is pasted in i'm sure there's a way that you can just make that exit just put an extra carriage return or something like that but yeah so so that really gives you uh, uh an overview of the xr side of things and similar to the xe you just add the, the here as required so uh, just to recap then what am i really doing this for it's to avoid me having to jump on multiple different places on the network and um, we can see what uh, uh router lsas are in the spf database so just to recap on that show ospf one base uh, and we see the the you know what we should uh, the routers that we want to ensure have connectivity to the loopbacks um, and that we can ping the loopbacks in order to ensure that when services are layered on top of the IGP, uh, the loopbacks are reachable when there's a loopback for services and features further up the stack. That really concludes this video. Um, I'm sorry it was really fast, but that's the pace that I'm working at just now. Um, any comments, feedback, please leave it in the com. Uh, please leave it in the. Um, below the video in the comments of YouTube. Uh, if there's anything I can help you with, I'll post the scripts. Uh, they're nice and easy to uh, just take and amend yourself. Hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, see you again next time. Thank you.